So who wins the influence game? Who's more persuasive? Who's more influential? Is it introverts? Extroverts? Amberverts? Omniverts? Perverts? Okay, we won't be talking about the perverts. But hey, who is more persuasive? Who is more influential? How can we persuade with power? Let's get into it. Maximize your influence. Kurt Mortensen is the author of Persuasion IQ, Laws of Charisma, and the best-selling book, Maximum Influence. Kurt Mortensen here, Podcast 515, as we get into introverts, extroverts, ambiverts, all the verts, or at least most of the verts, as we fine-tune and enhance our persuasion influence skills, things we should have learned a long time ago, but hey, you're here, you're learning them now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the podcast. Thanks for your love and support. Thanks for your emails. Hey, send me an email at Kurt, K-U-R-T at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. If we use your question, your comment, your humor, your geeky article on the podcast, you get the free gold version of InfluenceUniversity.com. So a little housekeeping, everything you need is at MaximizeYourInfluence.com, from the links to the advanced training to your free Persuasion IQ assessment, to all the links from this podcast. Check it out. Tell your family and friends and enemies about the podcast. It can be found at iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and of course, MaximizeYourInfluence.com. Hope you're having an incredible week. You're making it happen. You're achieving your goals. You're making your quotas. You got a bigger smile on your face. You've strengthened your relationships. I'm telling you, everything you want in life is on the other side of persuasion and influence. I know that's a broad statement, but that's my world and I'm sticking to it. So let's get into the persuasion blunder of the week. Don't, don't, don't. So I'm driving along on the freeway. It's about four lanes. And I was in the fast lane, and this car was coming up fast. And I was going pretty fast, I thought. So I was being courteous, pulled over. And there was a semi there. And kind of blocking the on-ramp was the semi. And there was a police officer coming in. So this car was going fast. They're in a hurry. I don't know what's going on. And they came up on another car that was going faster than the speed limit, but this car wasn't taking it. They were mad. They were weaving out. They were honking. They were flashing their lights. And the thing is, this the car in front of him slowed down because of the police officer. Now, the police officer came on and was kind of getting hidden by that semi-truck. This guy wasn't having it, wasn't having it, upset. And there was finally a window for this guy to pass this slower car. Again, I wasn't going that slow. This car had seen that the police officer had slowing down. Nobody wants to take it, but the guy coming up from behind went past him, gave him the bird... And started speeding. Was going to show them for going slow. And yep, you called it. The police officer saw that, went behind him, pulled him over, and gave him a ticket. And the blunder being what we see, what we think, how we interpret the situation is very different than the actual situation. This guy wasn't being rude or mean. Actually, slowing down should have helped the person out to realize maybe they should look around to see why are they slowing down. And they wouldn't have got the ticket. You know, how we interpret the situation is very different than the situation. So we have to slow down and remember that our brain's never 100% correct. It sees things. When there's a UFO sighting, other people start to see UFOs and they actually think they see a UFO. Maybe they do. A bear escaped out of a zoo out of Europe. Everyone's seeing bears around the city. No, the bear didn't even make it very far. They just put it onto the news too fast. Try to go to a football or any sports game. And go to one where you don't care which side wins and sit on both sides. <laughs> it's amazing. There's this big hit and one side will say, good hit. Yeah, the other side, cheap shot, right? You know how it is. They put people in this dark room. All right, the light's going to start blinking here. You count how many blinks. And people are like, oh, five, six, ten. There was no blinking light. Three people see an accident. You get three completely different versions of the accident. It's called self-perception bias. Be careful. Get all the facts. In fact, that's one of the number one complaints about your prospect, the person you're trying to influence, that's one size fits all, that you're assuming you know what they need. Hey, maybe you do. You probably do. But number one, they need to feel like you know what they need. And number two, you can't assume, you can't prejudge. Prejudging destroys people that are trying to sell, that are trying to influence, because 
When you prejudge someone like you know them, you know what they need, or they're not going to buy, or they're not the type of person, number one, it sucks the life out of you and your presentation. You're not giving your all. Of course, they're not going to buy. Of course, you can't influence them. Even if you're correct half the time, you still have to give it your all. Don't prejudge. Don't get stuck in that self-perception bias. That is our blunder of the week. So with that, let's get to the email, which will lead us to our geeky, scarly article of the week. Oh, boy! This is Charlotte from New Zealand. I know Charlotte. I've been her persuasive speech coach. She's come a long way. And hey, send me a video of your presentation. I'll take a look at it. Give you some advice as far as how to become more persuasive, more influential, get more yeses. It's what I love to do. I've monitored thousands, yes, thousands of presentations. I know it's working and what's not working. So he says, Kurt, who is more persuasive, introverts or extroverts? My boss will only hire extroverts. I'm an extrovert, but I've heard you say that introverts can be more persuasive. What say you? All right. Thanks, Charlotte. And remember, as we learn persuasion and influence, the keys to adapt to the person, to the audience. So it's different. When you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're completely adapting to that person. When you're going to a department, say an accounting or a sales department, usually most people have the same type of personalities, usually. But when you're in a group, a larger group, you're shooting down the middle because you have all the personalities in the group. So that's an important safety tip to think about. So a presentation one-on-one -on -one can be very different than, say, a large group of people. So this comes from the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania and Adam Grant. And it's titled, Rethinking the Extroverted Sales Idea, the Ambivert Advantage. So people have always assumed, sales managers have always assumed that extroverts are the most productive salespeople. That's who they hire. But then the research is showing there's an inconsistent relationship between being an extrovert and your sales performance. Now, ambiverts, that might be a new word for you are people that fall the middle between being an extrovert and an introvert. They're just kind of in the middle. They can kind of live in both worlds, but they're the spectrum. They get and understand an extrovert, and they get and understand an introvert. See, ambiverts take the skills from introverts. They're good at listening. They're good at talking. And they can usually gauge the right level of assertiveness, because you can be more assertive to an extrovert than to an introvert. See, ambiverts usually can strike a better balance. So they don't appear too excited, too enthusiastic, or too overconfident. So it's interesting. They did a study at an outbound call center. And they were looking at introverts, extroverts. They had them take the assessments. And the ambiverts, who were kind of in the middle between an introvert and an extrovert, outperformed both introverts and extroverts in terms of sales productivity. So what they're saying in this article is that organizations, sales managers, whoever it is, need to rethink that extroverts are always better when they're people-facing. So when they're hiring and training, extroverts can benefit from modeling some more quiet, reserved tendencies of the ambiverts. So basically, ambiverts use a more balanced approach, are the most productive salespeople, which challenges the conventional thoughts, the conventional wisdom, and the conventional hiring practices. Hmm, interesting. Let's take a deeper dive in that. Let's look at introverts, extroverts, because it's not like we could completely switch. We could adapt and do some other things. You got to be you. But let's talk about some ways you can adapt. I mean, this debate over introverts, extroverts has been going on for years. I've been seeing these studies for a long time. Now, Carl Moore, he's a professor at McGill University, has studied ambiverts for years. And here's what he estimates. So when you look at business leaders... 40% of the top business leaders are extroverts. And that makes sense. You know, they're connecting. They know how to build rapport. That's what people have been told to hire the extroverts. But then right now, 40% are introverts. So it's pretty much even. 40% extroverts, 40% introverts, and 20% are called true ambiverts. So let's go through each one of these. Some pros, some cons, things to work on and help you read the person you're talking to so you can know, oh, introvert, extrovert, ambivert. So let's start with extroverts. That's where a lot of people are in persuasion, influence, negotiation, and sales. So extroverts are people that are outward turning. 
They're energized by interacting with people. Work needs to be fun. They love the social activities. They love the monthly company birthday parties. They love to pop in. I mean, they just thrive on the energy and talking to people, getting to know people. That's who they are. And so they're really good at connecting and getting to know people. And they're fun. They're fun to be around. And they can be the life of the party. So introverts gain their energy from being around others. They love stimulating environments. Hey, if work's boring, if you're no fun, ah, it drives them crazy. They love the large sporting events, the large gathering, the social events, meeting new people, getting more friends on LinkedIn, on their social media. And their communication styles is they're very talkative, they're very expressive. They can be very loud and outgoing, which can annoy your introverts. And they're really good at multitasking, collaboration, bringing people together, interaction with others, and they're great connectors. So some of their strengths is they don't have that fear of rejection as much. They get very outgoing. They're great at initiating conversations. They don't mind going up to people and making those new contacts. And what's great about them is their enthusiasm can be very contagious. Again, they're fun to be around. They're skilled at networking and building these large networks. And there's some challenges with everything. There's strengths and some challenges, or we just could say it, some weaknesses. Listening skills. Their brains are going so fast, they're going to jump in. They're not very good listeners. They miss out on important feedback or the ability to read people. They can be very impatient to where, let's get to the point, rushing through the conversation, it can come across as very aggressive. And we all have bits and pieces of these. But you look at introverts, again, who are out persuading extroverts now. Because think about it, extroverts are are more salesy, maybe tend to be a little more pushy, a little more aggressive. And that can cause resistance, especially now. There's been some shifts in the world of persuasion and sales. Introverts tend to listen more, tend to have better eye contact, and tend to come across as more as a consultant. And we know everyone would rather be consulted and come to their own conclusion than being sold and told what to do. So let's get a little more into introverts. So introverts tend to be more inward turning. They feel more comfortable focusing on themselves, their internal thoughts. They don't need that external stimulation. Whatever, birthday a month, I don't want to go. There's another one, who cares type of thing. Get no right or wrong here, we are all just different. So an introvert's energy comes from Quiet, low stimulation environments, just recharging. They don't need all that loud. They prefer small gatherings, one-on-one interactions over the large groups. Then instead of going to the baseball game like an extrovert, they might just go jogging or just maybe play a quiet game of racquetball with one other person. Communication styles, they're more reserved. They're like, why you pop it in? Send me an email. They tend to think a little more before they speak. They might not speak up as much as an extrovert, and they can be overrun by extroverts at times if they don't watch it. Usually need that deep concentration, very detail-oriented. And introverts can find those social interactions draining and just need a little time to recharge to be by themselves. But when you look at their strengths, incredible listeners, great eye contact, They are better at reading the person, understanding their needs, and they're still building strong relationships, but it's in a different way. This coming across as someone with more empathy, and it seems like they care more. In fact, there was a study done in 2012 when they're looking at the listening ability of introverts versus extroverts, and they scored them, higher the better. Extroverts were at 1.73, and compare that to introverts were at 4.70, in their ability to listen. That's three times better. So not only were introverts better listeners, they tend to be more thoughtful. Again, they think before they speak. Extroverts tend to just jump in and sometimes they'll put their foot in the mouth because they're speaking so fast without thinking about it. Introverts tend to be more thoughtful and have better, well-considered responses and solutions. Extroverts are better at vision, big picture. Introverts are better at being detail-oriented, following up. More attention to the client's concerns. Studies do show that introverts tend to be more creative. In fact, another interesting study found that introverts scored a level of three of being creative. That's the high part of the scale. And extroverts scored at a level one. 
Now, the challenges with being an introvert are the energy levels. They find those constant social interactions draining, and they'll need the time to recharge. They have more challenges on initiating contact, cold calling, starting conversations with strangers. Now, let's talk about these ambiverts. They're in the middle of being an introvert and extrovert. They have both qualities of being an introvert and extrovert. They can adjust their behavior based on the situation and the people they are interacting with. So, ambiverts can be energized both by social interactions and spending time alone. They can be comfortable in both the small gatherings and the large gatherings. They can handle the pop-in. They can handle the text or the email. So they can sense when it's time to talk and be outgoing or when it's time to shut up and be reserved. They can be great listeners, but they can also be great conversationalists. They're flexible in their work style, and they've learned to balance their social interactions with alone time and, we'll say, party time. So their strengths is that balance, reading the situation. They can approach them based on their clients' and personalities' needs. Again, they can switch between introvert and extroverts. They can start the conversation. They can listen to the conversation. Challenges, sometimes getting it right. Sometimes they read the person the wrong way to adapting to the person. But we know, based on that latest study, that ambiverts tend to outperform introverts and extroverts. And we've talked about this. Your ability to adapt to the person, the situation, persuade them how they want to be persuaded, adapt to their style, to their personality, to their culture, to their age is always the key. So let's take a look. Introverts need the stimulation. Extroverts are okay by themselves. Introverts tend to work by themselves. Extroverts like to work with groups of people. Introverts are more reflected and reserved. Extroverts are more responsive, enthusiastic. Introverts usually prefer writing to talking. Extroverts, no, let's talk about it. Let's pop in. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Interesting introverts have better reading comprehension. Extroverts have better speech comprehension. Energized by alone time. Extroverts energized by social interaction. Get no right or wrong. We're different. That's good. That's what makes the world great. If we were all the same, believe the same, have the same personalities, we're all extroverts, we're all introverts, that would make the world a terrible place. So embrace it. This is a good thing. But hey, if you're an extrovert, learn from the introverts to listen, to adapt. And if you're an introvert, learn from the extroverts. There's positives on both sides. There are challenges on both sides. And then we have the word of the day. The omnivert is an individual whose traits don't fit on either end of the introvert, extrovert personality spectrum. Now, they have signs of both extroversion and introversion. But they don't exist between the two extremes. They portray both. So an introvert is a person who can switch between extreme introversion and extreme extroversion, depending on their mood, environment, and circumstances. The challenge is they exhibit these extreme shifts in behavior. So it's strange for a lot of people. It's not congruent to sometimes there's extreme fluctuations, way outgoing. Oh, they need the solitude. They might go through a phase where they need a lot of social interaction. They might go through a phase where they don't talk to anybody. So their behavior is more influenced by their mood and their energy levels. So ambiverts are more consistent. They have a balance between it being an introvert and extroverts. They can adapt. Where omniverts experience more extreme shifts between the two. Ambiverts adapt to the situation with moderate changes in behavior, while omniverts display intense, unpredictable, extreme changes. And when we've talked about trust, go to the archives at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. We talked about predictability. So ambiverts are more predictable versus omniverts are not as predictable. Ambiverts find the middle ground with their social needs, right? Omniverts are very extreme, needing a lot of social interaction to going to none. Ambiverts need a little bit of both. So how can you become more ambiverted? I don't know that's a word. I don't think that's a word, but I like it. Let's become more ambiverted. Work on reading the situation. Learn on adapting to the person. Work on your EQ, your emotional intelligence. Get more trained on personalities, adapting to the four different personality styles. You can go to the archives. You can get more information on that. Adapt your communication skills to an introvert, to an extrovert. And if you're an introvert, learn to get into those social groups, those social interactions. If you're an extrovert, find the value of solo time, taking the time to be alone with your thoughts. And for everyone, step out of your comfort zone. If you're an introvert, that's where you like to live. If you're an extrovert, that's where you like to live. 
stretch, get to know other people, adapt to different personalities. Again, no right or wrong. When I do personality training, how to adapt to a personality, to understand your own personality strengths and weaknesses, I keep saying it. There's nothing wrong. We're different. This is good. This is good. Learn to adapt. That's what great persuaders do. So work on it. Understand where you're at. Embrace it. Become better. And it'll make a huge difference in your life and your success. So the a special of the week, InfluenceUniversity.com. You can either send me an email to get the free gold version. You can access the free version at InfluenceUniversity.com. But the special of the week, you get full access, lifetime membership to InfluenceUniversity.com for 60% off. Basically, you get 60% off the annual membership, but also get a lifetime time access to Influence University. What is InfluenceUniversity.com? Everything I've done from my books to my seminars to the 52-week advanced persuasion tool program to the library to the persuasion software that persuades for you. Check it out. The link at MaximizeYourInfluence.com. This is podcast 515. That's the link that you will click and you become more influential. So, hey, take something you've learned today. Decide what you want to use to improve. You'll become a better negotiator, a better leader, more influential. You'll be better at self-persuasion and mindset. And of course, as you know, you'll be able to go out and persuade with power.